we do want to emphasize that our goal is to support the advent of sustainable energy. It is not to create a walled garden and use that to bludgeon our competitors, <laughs> which is sometimes used by some companies. <coughs> All right, guys. So today we have a topic that gets some Tesla owners heated up faster than they can precondition their batteries. And this is especially true in urban areas because they feel like supercharger sites are already so jam packed with Teslas as it is why would you even think about allowing non-Tesla EVs to join in? So you guys have all seen the videos like this where dozens of Teslas are waiting in queue at busy California supercharger lines just for the chance of plugging in for 30 minutes. And it's not just California where the Tesla demand is quickly catching up to its supercharger supply, but it's in places like Memphis, Tennessee, or Plato, Texas, and as far away as Hong Kong. And these are just a few of the nearly 3,000 supercharging sites around the world where people are lining up just for a chance to charge. What's up guys, it's Kim Java here, and we have seen multiple reports in recent weeks, including the one that I know you guys probably already seen from Tesla enthusiast and insider Sawyer Merritt, where he confirmed that during the last Tesla all hands meeting in early September, Elon actually mentioned that supercharger networks would open up to other automakers as early as next month and it would do so in Europe. And of course, this is not the first time that we've heard Elon talk about opening up the network to other automakers. He actually brought it up to our friend Gally Russell during the infamous Q1 of 2018 earnings call. I know you guys remember this. Boring bonehead questions are not cool. Next. We're going to go to YouTube. Sorry. These, these questions are so dry, <laughs> they're killing me. So in that call in 2018, he said Tesla reached out to other automakers, but no one was interested in using its network, which if you're watching this channel, you already know it is the gold standard right now for EV charging around the world. And we're happy to support other automakers and let them use our supercharger stations. They would just need to pay, you know, share the costs proportionate to their vehicle usage. So this is something we're very open to, um, but so far none of the other car makers have wanted to do this. Well, it seems like that has changed in a big way and automakers around the world, first with Europe and then in Asia, have started working with Tesla to gain access to its supercharger network. Elon tweeted this back in July saying, quote, we're making our supercharger network available to other EVs later this year. And a few days later during the company's Q2 earnings call, he even explained how this would all work. Currently thinking it's a real simple thing where you just download the Tesla app and you go to a supercharger and you just indicate which stall you're in. So you, you plug in your, your car, even if it's not a Tesla, and then you just access the app and say, turn on the stall that I'm in for how much electricity. And this should basically work with almost any manufacturer's cars. Now, before we dive in too far, I do have to thank the Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. I've actually gifted these to my dad before and my husband swears by his because they're really minimal and modern and smaller than pretty much any wallet out there on the market right now. And if you're used to that old bulky bifold wallet, um, they just become sloppy after a while and really beat up looking while these are just minimal and sleek and great for special gifts for people and turn into really cool birthday gifts. The best part is that they can hold up to 12 cards each plus cash and they offer over 30 different colors and styles like this carbon fiber and burnt titanium and Ridge is so confident that you will love your wallet that they'll let you actually test drive it for 45 days and if you're not happy you can send it back for a full refund check out ridge.com slash kim java and enter code kim java for 10 percent off now, when I talk to most people about any other EV that is not a Tesla, one of the first things that they bring up is Tesla's supercharging network as the biggest competitive advantage, and they would never go to any other automaker for an EV because of that. And it's sort of like Tesla's moat. But being a brilliant business person, Elon actually knew back in 2018 that building the supercharging network and using it as a moat may not actually give you as much of an advantage a few years down the road. I'm just wondering why that isn't a moat because you know, as a long-term investor, I feel like the charging infrastructure you guys have built would take years and millions of dollars for another brand to replicate. So I'm just curious about the strategic thinking behind opening that up versus keeping it closed. First of all, I think moats are lame. Uh, I mean, they're like nice and sort of 
a quaint uh, vestigial way. Um, but like, if you if you're if your only defense against like invading armies is a moat, uh, you will not last long. Uh, what matters is the the pace of innovation. That that is the fundamental determinant of competitiveness. So honestly, I don't even feel like Tesla is giving up that much by lowering the drawbridge a little bit just to let other EVs use their chargers. And they're actually gaining a ton back as a result. Not only will there be additional funding coming into Tesla from other automakers, and there's gonna be government funding too, but all this incoming cash flow will only help to build out and expand the world's best and fastest charging network that much more. I think it's also important to comment that increasing the utilization of the network actually reduces our cost, which allows us to uh, lower charging prices for all customers, makes the network more profitable, allows us to grow the network faster. And, then, and no matter what, we're gonna to continue to aggressively expand the network capacity, increasing charging speeds, improving the trip planning tools to protect against site congestion, and just continue to focus on minimum wait time for all customers. Also, think about how many other EV owners will park and supercharge on Tesla networks, only to chat with Tesla owners about their cars, with Tesla basically getting more free word of mouth marketing as non-Tesla owners charge their cars. So I have to be honest, this whole video was inspired by me scrolling through Tesla owners group on Facebook and seeing this picture of a Polestar 2 owner pulling up to a supercharger in Michigan and trying to plug his car into the charger. Of course, the Tesla owner who posted this picture did end up getting out of his car to help and see what was going on. And the Polster owner didn't have some magical adapter or anything like that. So the Tesla owner directed him to the EVgo charging station just a few hundred feet away that has the compatible CCS charger that just about every other EV uses. So when it comes to Tesla opening up his charging network next month, it makes perfect sense to do it in Europe first because most European superchargers use that standard CCS connector. Basically, all Tesla has to do is implement the in-app feature and an EV can pull up and plug in to gain access. Of course, here in North America, it is a little more challenging because of that proprietary plug. So an adapter is needed. According though to this report by Tesla Rati, a study published earlier this year that looked at some 30 countries in Europe showed that in these EV heavy countries, the pace of EV charging points increased in correlation to EV sales in those countries. They also showed significant benefit for Tesla to open its chargers up in Norway first, partially because all Norway's electricity is produced by renewable energy and Tesla market share in Norway is also substantial. So much so that the Model Y actually topped EV sales charts in less than a week after delivery started. So this makes Norway probably the best place to open the supercharger network to other EV owners and expose them to the Tesla brand. Norway was also the country with the highest market share of EV sales. Uh, obviously in order for this to, to be, for the supercharger to be useful to other car companies, we need to grow the network faster than we're growing vehicle output, yeah. which is not easy. We're growing vehicle output at a, at a hell of a rate. <laughs> so superchargers need to grow faster than vehicle output. So when Tesla finally opens up chargers for other EVs here in the US, possibly even as early as next year, it will inevitably put some pressure on the network by increasing traffic, but there is the new 7.5 billion dollar infrastructure funding bill that will be going into effect in the US and it almost certainly accelerate the deployment of new stations at the same time. And it will reduce some of the current owner's concerns that are dreading the thought of the long wait times when Tesla does open up his charging network. I am curious what you guys think of all this. If you are a Tesla owner, do you like the idea of sharing superchargers with other non-Tesla EVs? And what do you think about Tesla's stance on opening up the network to others. Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, the best way that you can thank us is by clicking on that like button and sharing this video because it tells YouTube to share our videos with more people that are like-minded and spread the word of EVs and sustainability. And lastly, if you haven't already, please make sure that you are subscribed for more unique and insightful Tesla and EV videos. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you next time. Time.